Hey folks and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. The pickup park next to me needs no introduction. That of course is the Ford Raptor and for 2021 Ford says it is even better off-road plus it can work harder than ever and we're going to put it to the test. So in this video we're going to go fly across some fields, we're going to tow a 7,000 pound trailer and then you might be wondering what the heck that big steel thing is behind me. Well you'll find out more about that very soon. Let's start it with the walk around. So powering this Raptor is a three and a half liter twin turbo V6. It makes 450 horsepower and 510 pound feet of torque sent through a 10 speed automatic. Now I will mention when this new generation of Raptor was unveiled, everyone was upset that there was no V8 option. Well, Ford heard you guys, there is a Raptor R model coming and that thing is gonna pack a V8. Honestly, I don't know how much crazier you can get than this, but I'm excited to see it to see what Ford does. So, let's keep looking at the truck we have here today. And honestly, the headline on this Raptor, 37 inch tires. Those things are monstrous. That is a set of BF Goodrich KO2s. And I mean, it's such a big deal. Ford even puts 37 graphics down the side of this thing. Now, when you get this tire package, you actually end up getting a unique frame here. Plus you get different suspension in the front end to make sure that this truck can handle all of that rubber. Now, as we roll back, I will quickly touch on the payload number. We'll look at the door jam sticker. 1,270 pounds, which for a Raptor, for a desert focused racing truck is a really good number. Now, finally, there's so much going on back here. This is an entirely new rear suspension in the Raptor, but rather than me talk to you about it here, let me show you why we bought that new steel ramp. Now we bought this thing because we want to show you guys the underside of all these trucks and vehicles that we test, especially off-road vehicles. And then for anyone who is local, we picked this ramp up off of our friend Frank over at Universal Blast All in Alliston, Ontario. So if you need something sandblasted, give Frank a call, he can help you out. And now let's talk about this Raptor and what it has going on under there because again, there's so much unique suspension here that wasn't here before. So first of all, here's a skid plate check. You're gonna be able to count one, two, three, four, five skid plates underneath this Raptor, um, especially up front, it's really well sealed up. Now the next thing I wanna point out is something Ford calls the trumpet. Um, the Raptor notoriously, people never liked the way it sounded. Everyone said, oh, we want a V8 growl, not that V6 buzz. And so Ford went back to the drawing board and they added in this entire extra loop in the exhaust. When I first looked at it, you, you look and go, what the heck is that there for? It doesn't look like it serves a purpose. Well, the purpose is to make that exhaust tube longer to make it sound a little bit better. And from inside, I think it sounds better. It will never sound like a V8. Sorry, Ford, that's just the way it is. But from outside the truck, actually, when I was shooting, it sounded really good. When you were coming across that field. I like that it has a quiet setting. Yeah, that too. See the thing I want to point out underneath the truck, a full size 37 inch spare tire. And when you get the 37 package, it's actually a unique frame you're getting to accommodate that tire. And there's barely any clearance under there. It just fits. But I mean, it's super cool that you are getting a full size spare. It's such a big, big tire under there. Oh, and one other thing, the five link rear suspension. If you've ever asked yourself, what the heck does that mean? Well, let me show you. Here is the new rear suspension on the Raptor. Now, let me show you. You have an upper and a lower control arm. Those are one, two links. Here's the pan hard bar or the track bar. That's the third link. And then an upper and lower control arm over here. Those are links four and five. And of course, the Raptor now uses coil springs and shocks. There are no more leaf springs. And what's really cool, this suspension setup is unique to the Raptor. You won't find it on any other F-150. 
So before we start getting comments on why didn't you drive it all the way up the ramp, <laughs> just so that you're aware, the Raptor is the widest thing on the road. And when you actually look at the shots, you'll notice that each of the tires was hanging over the edge of the ramp by about three inches on each side. So we decided to err on the side of caution and only get it up to the sort of the, the half vertical position. Uh, in the future, other vehicles with normal tire widths will easily go up and we'll get it up flat. Mm. This was a great test vehicle for the Ramp though because if the Raptor will fit, anything will fit. There's no doubt the Raptor is fun focused, but you can still work hard with it and Ford still brings its sort of work ready options. For instance, this tailgate, you're getting the ruler along there, the little holders for your cell phone, the C-clamp pocket, and then of course the classic Ford bed step. One of the best bed steps going, I would say. And then one of the coolest technologies that's come to the Raptor that's arrived on F-150, Pro Power on board. And you know what? We were actually putting it to use today to light up our shop. Aha! And let there be light. Normally we use our little gas power generator to light our shop up here when we're working, but here on the Raptor we have Pro Power on board. That's two kilowatts of power, more than enough to light us up here today. All right, folks, now it's time for the fun part. Uh, we have the Raptor here in Baja mode, and we are in what I would consider to be the closest thing to the desert we can get to, which is an unmaintained road, which runs through a farm field, so it's a big, wide open space. Um, it's something we have to talk about. This is a massive desert truck. It's not necessarily designed for what we have here in Southern Ontario. That being said, when you do get a road like this, you can go out and do this. Let's hit it, Dad. But it sounds pretty good too. That exhaust baffle opens up. And now our only issue is that our potholes here in Ontario fill up with water and ice. <laughs> yeah, the ice is the problem. Yeah, yeah the, the ice, ice will really mess you up. Well, ice does damage. I mean, so far it's insane how insulated from what is going on outside we are in here. Like, I don't feel anything. Yeah, I was... You don't feel anything coming through to the tires. It's not bucking. It's not pushing you. It's just... It's easy. It's absolutely easy to do this in this truck. Yeah, I was saying, I was driving earlier and trying to be a little bit cautious. So on each, each pass, I pushed a little more, a little more, a little more. I've never gotten to the point yet where I went, holy crap, that's too much. Yes. It's really a amazing truck yeah wild just the suspension set up here and of course moving to this five link coil spring I mean leaf springs that was always one of the disadvantages is that you wouldn't get the travel and you wouldn't get that same articulation out of your rear end now that that's gone the Raptor has nothing left to complain about there's no Achilles heel here maybe just the size well, except for the fact that now I got to articulate <laughs> So another thing I have to say, I think it's natural we're going to end up comparing this Raptor to the TRX a lot. Um, it doesn't feel as heavy as, as the TRX, and it, it straight up isn't as heavy. And that was one thing we said in the Ram a million times, is just that truck feels so heavy and bogged down. Mm. The Raptor comes across powerful and kind of light on its feet in uh, comparison. There's a good word for you. Nimble. Yes, Nimble. absolutely. It just, even the steering. Yeah. Um, it just feels like you can sort of power around things easier. Yeah. Yeah, and TRX was all about just hammer through it. <laughs> yeah, and it's worth mentioning too, uh, the steering here is adjustable, the amount of feedback and the amount of uh, torque on the wheel, and then the suspension as well is now adaptive. So when you put it in Baja mode, all of that stuff changes to uh, suit this off-road driving. Yeah, and just to complete Steve's thought one more time, it amazes me that I, I realized this truck was uh, designed to run in the desert. That's where they've tested it. That's where also we've driven it. But 
let's face it, how much of North America is desert? So I think most Raptor owners have never been in the desert, may never go to the desert. So, so realistically, what we're doing here today is about as good as it gets for non-desert conditions. And then, Dad, the beauty of this latest gen Raptor is you pull it on the road, and I think this is the most civilized Raptor yet. It's 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 a little different than an F-150. There's a little more body roll there, but it's really not that big of a jump. Not like it used to be. You get into a first gen Raptor and that thing's rolling around the corners because it was a passive suspension setup. It had to be ready to take whoops at any time. Whereas today, everything is active and everything can adjust to the conditions. And it just means we have barely any compromises anymore. Um, I don't know how you feel about it, but yeah, I mean, again, I keep saying this, besides the size, you could daily drive this thing easily. It's really, you don't give up any comfort in any other way. I mean, the truth is you've said it all, really. There's so many gadgets in here right now, that's the only thing. It reminds me a bit of like the space shuttle. <laughs> However, it everything works and works better than I had sort of hoped. So the other cool thing is that not only is the Raptor better off-road now, and you just saw some of that, well, it can actually tow quite a bit more now, too. 8,200 pounds. So let's stick a trailer on the back and see how it works. Yeah, that was a failing of the first gen, so um, it's still going to hang low in the back. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we'll see. Okay, folks, time to hook up our trailer so I can show you the backup cameras here on the Raptor. And there certainly are a lot of cameras here. So this is your first view. It's a rear and then that top down. And what is cool over here, so you can hit that plus, it asks you where you wanna zoom in, and then it will zoom you in on one specific corner, or even just the rear end of the truck. That is uh, pretty cool if you're really in tight with something, and you wanna get a really good sense for exactly where your truck is. Now besides that, I'll zoom out a little. You hit this button and you get all these views. So there's that around view I mentioned. There's just a wide rear view. I'll use this one for just a second to get a little closer. All my cameras are a little dirty still. Apologies about that. Now when I get here, oh there, Dad saw it. He cleaned it off for me. What a nice guy. Uh, I also have a wide angle rear view. I have a cargo view from the Chimsel. This would be an added camera that you could put wherever you want, inside your trailer, probably on the back of your trailer. Then that's the zoom in view on the hitch. And then this is my trailer reverse guidance, but I don't have a trailer on right now, so it won't actually work. But man, there's a ton of camera views here on the Raptor. And sadly, yeah, this zoomed in view, I really can't see it. Can you give the camera a wipe again? It's still dirty. There we go. So now he cleaned it. If you wipe it with a dirty glove, it doesn't work. <laughs> and this is a great zoom in view, so I can drop, boom, boom right there. Right. And now another thing I love, see where it says auto park brake? When you do this zoom in hitch view, and then you put the truck into park, the parking brake automatically comes on, which makes so much sense to me because if you're hooking up a trailer, you probably want that parking brake, so they made it automatic. And now, folks, we have our 7,000-pound trailer on the back. One of the biggest reasons I wanted to do this today straight up is because we're going to do a 0-60 to 60 run, and I want to see how the Raptor compares to the TRX. The TRX is still the only truck we've ever had run a sub-10-second sub 0 to 60 with 7,000 pounds behind it. So I'm curious to see how the Raptor does. That's coming up soon. Uh, for now, let's talk about how it's actually towing the weight. I'll give you my passenger seat report. It feels really good. It definitely feels busier, I would say, than a standard F-150, just in so much that I can feel the weight back there, not pushing the truck around, but I can just feel it communicating everything to me. Um, and I noticed the front end up just a hair, but I don't know how that's actually feeling for you, Dad. So what do you, what do you feel? Yeah, exactly that. This is where this suspension is showing its, and I'm not gonna call it weaknesses, but basically it's characteristics. It's sure. built for, for high-speed desert running. So when you're towing, so first off, as you said, it's communicating more. So in other words, it's shaking my butt more than most. The nose has popped up a little bit. The steering has gotten just a touch lighter. 
And a strange thing today while we're doing this is uh, it's a dirty dark day so the headlights are on and we're getting oncoming traffic flashing us because I think our high beams are on. So that slight lift in the front end is creating this impression that we're driving with our high beams, which of course we're not. Um, there's an auto function that would be cool, is a high beam leveler. Leveler, yeah. Now, the only other thing I got to say is that this trailer and truck, more than most, would really benefit from an equalizing hitch. If we had an equalizing hitch, that would probably take out the lift um, and just stiffen everything up. So, And those are all fair points, but I do think we just have to get back to the fact that this truck can do what we did out there in that field, and then it can still tow up to 8,000 pounds pretty well. And this is getting back to the point of there's just less and less compromise these days. And, and with this suspension, sure, is it the best towing rig on the road? Absolutely not. But is it uh, is it scary? No, no chance. You're gonna be able to tow a thing, this thing just fine. And uh, yeah, I think that's really the story of the Raptor today is it's a, it's a no compromise rig. No, and you're right. Uh, you know what, when we try to tell you what we're feeling here, we tend to try, we're comparing it to what we consider to be the 100%. Um, but when you consider what this truck is built for, it's, it's not gonna simply do as well as other trucks that are meant for towing on a regular basis. On the other hand, if you took those in the desert, you'd, you know, shake your teeth out. Exactly. And it's not like Ford forgot about towing when it comes to technology. We do have Pro Trailer Backup Assist. We do have an integrated trailer brake controller here, standard sway control, all of that stuff. Uh, so yeah, you are also getting the technology to back up the trailer back there. Plus a tow haul mode and you can set up different um, profiles for each one of your trailers. So the truck will remember all of those settings and then go back to them when you hook up that trailer. So yeah, it's it's really made trailering that much easier now too. Yeah, <laughs> there's so many nannies on this thing though that it just makes me giggle because it's like when you hook up a trailer and then you get a message that says uh, uh, automatic reverse braking not available. Uh, yeah, I know, there's a trailer on it. <laughs> uh, but the one that's been getting me here today is I know that my left turn signals on the trailer are not working because we ripped the wire out and I'm just not fixing it in this slot. Um, so the truck knows it too, and it sends me a message, says, left turn, signals, not working. And I go, okay, thank you. Hit the okay button, it goes away. Five minutes later, da -da left turn, signal lights, not working. Yes, I know. Hit the okay button. Five more minutes later, does it again. Fact of the matter is for it, if I wanted my wife in the truck, I'd have brought her. <laughs> like, thanks for telling me once. But you don't have to keep repeating it over and over. Yeah, and if I can come up with one more complaint, um, and it's it feels maybe like a shallow complaint, but this truck of all trucks, Dad, I actually find myself missing a head-up display. And head-up display, you now get it at Ram and General Motors. And in this truck that I'm supposed to go super fast in, having a head-up is really convenient. So, you know, I hate to complain about something that's not here, but yeah, now that the competitors have it and this truck doesn't, I do find myself wanting that, and I wish the Raptor had it. Well, I guess, you know, Christmas is coming. What can we say? <laughs> And now let me also show you the camera views you can access while you're on the move. So there's a physical button here, and boom, you get this, which is, you know, if you have cargo in the bed, you could check it out. You can also have your auxiliary camera. This could be inside or behind your trailer. You can look right down at your hitch. It's a little dirty right now, <laughs> but that's really, that's the hitch connection right there. And then finally, you can just have the rear camera. And once again, I apologize for how dirty it is. Nothing I can do about that. But the one thing I find interesting is, as far as I can tell, this will stay on indefinitely. Other brands put a timer on it. I think GM, it's eight seconds. But this, if you wanna watch your trailer for your entire drive, you can. And here is our fuel economy while towing, folks. We manage 19 and a half liters per 100, over 42 and a half kilometers. And for the US folks, change it over. That's 12 MPG over 26 miles. Okay folks, we're gonna do zero to 60 with our 7,000 pound trailer. 
We've got it in tow haul mode, empty road. Ready for the race, Dad, hit it. quick and now you can see how it stacks up on the leaderboard. Well folks, we have come to the end of this review. So the first generation Raptor, that thing was absolutely compromised for its goal of desert running. In 2021 though, the technology has come so far that this truck you see here today, there's barely any compromise. You can still eat up the desert and then tow 8,000 pounds with pretty much total confidence. And I mean, you know what? We had a hard time finding things to complain about. Today was a pretty good day because we got to go off-road in a Raptor. So that's it for this one. Now please let me know what you think of the Raptor. As always, while you're down below, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. See ya.